Uh, today's speaker is Tingya Hu, who's a research assistant, research assistant here. Um, he's from Taiwan, and he did his undergraduate studies at the National Taiwan University. University, excuse me. He's uh, completed his, ma his master's here, and his research has really focused in uh, in video processing, machine learning. Mm -hmm. We'll talk a little bit more about his mm -hmm. natural language uh, stuff, and uh, I'm really excited to hear more about the work that he's that he's done. Here. So uh, please take it away. Okay. Thank you. So. Hello, everyone. It's really my pleasure to be here. I'm Ting Yao. So today, I would like to introduce the airport parking space navigation system we built. Yeah, and we have a group of people, and we're from Language Technologies Institute here in Carnegie Mellon. So um, I would like to briefly mention the co-workers um, of the, the whole project. Um, so Pim Bo is the um, research visiting researcher uh, from China who has already left at this moment. Min Kong is visiting undergrad student. They both made a um, main contribution to the whole project. And I'm Ting Yao Hu, the researcher assistant, and our advisor, Professor Alexander Holtman. So let's start from the motivation of the whole thing. Um, imagine that when you are approaching the entrance of the parking space of, of airport. You may see things like this. Oh. Probably it will make you anxious because you are about to be late for your flight. And uh, uh, you don't know where the empty slot is. Even if luckily you can find one nearby, maybe just next to your car, but you may still don't want to take it because probably it's too far away from the destination building, from the building you want to go. And if you keep, keep driving, you don't know if you can reach another one, which is um, near your building. So we want to solve this problem for our user. That's why we build this airport parking space navigation system, which can detect the, first detect the vacant space slot through the surveillance camera for our user. It, it will also provide the navigation guidance um, to our customer. Okay, so in this project, we specifically focus on the area of um, the parking space in the airport because, because of its scale, because there are thousands of parking slots in the Pittsburgh airport. So I think um, we think that it has a better chance to show off the functionality, the effectiveness of our system if it's just the small field, then it won't take to, uh, you too long to drive through the whole, whole field. So, yeah, that's why we choose this, this space. The next question is, how do we achieve it? How do we find those convenient parking <coughs> slots in the airport for our user? The parking slot should be optimal. It should um, near to the, um, to the building, and uh, it won't take you too long to drive to that place and also minimize the distance you have to walk. So to achieve this, our system needs to um, count down these three following things. First, of course, we have to know where are those parking slots. And also, we need to know the current location of the user because we want to provide a navigation service. And um, finally, we, we need to know the best way to guide our, uh, guide our customer to reach um, their destination to reach the parking slot. So we build the following three things. They are all functional modules, and I will go into detail that the methodology and uh, how do we implement them. So the first one is vacant space detection, of course, and the second one, to know location, we have to car tracking. Um, the first two things um, are those programs built on cloud. So we have powerful computer to deal with all the computation and uh, maybe storage because we need to have data to, to do the statistics. The last one, we have a mobile navigation app installed on the mobile device of the user. So it's um, on the client side. So the, it's, it is much more important to care about the communication between the application, the app, 
and uh, the two modules um, mentioned before. Oh, sorry. Also, to complete the first two tasks, we also had we, we also need the help from a subsystem called parking space surveillance. That which means that we have set up cameras to monitor the parking space all the time. So this diagram illustrates um, the working flow of the whole system. Starting from the uh, parking space surveillance, we set up, set up uh, IP cameras, keep capturing the video stream, um, monitoring the, the parking space. And these video streams will be sent back to the central computer over there. It's, right now, it's the computer in the, um, in the airport parking office machine room. And in this computer, we conduct these two tasks, vacant space detection and uh, car tracking. Um, from the picture here, you can tell we solve these two problems in the fashion of computer vision. So based on the image we captured, we can locate, um, like in this red rectangle, it locates those, uh, where are those empty slots. And in this, in this module, we can track the current place of the user, so tracking the car. And these two pieces of information inform the destination of user and the current location of user so that our mobile navigation app will know exactly how should we guide user. So eventually, our app will provide an instruction like this. So here, you have to turn left, and the empty slot will be on your right, just like, like the user experience of Google Map or Navigation, other mainstream navigation app. Okay. Before we go, uh, any, uh, go into the detail of anything about our methodology or implementation detail, I would like to show you a video demo of the whole system. So, of course, we have too many pieces, so we we need to split our screen into four uh, four parts. But uh, later, you will see these four sections in the Button left one is the, just the monitor to the user. Because um, I was producing the, um, this example, so you will see me driving the car. This block shows you the function of vacant space detection. Yeah, later you will also see these red handle. Um, those red handle um, represent empty slots, res uh, different empty slots respectively. And the, the red one is which one that um, the system assigned to our user. So our system thought that it was the best one for, for our user. And in the top right section, you will see our function of car tracking. Um, so using a surveillance image, we can keep track on the location of, car, um, of those moving car. Of course, we need to know that, because in this image you can see there will be two car. And uh, we need to know that wh wh where, is, where is the one be belonging to our user. But um, in this video, we will show you the, the raw output of this module. So all the moving car will be, will be tagged. But within our program, we will make a decision that which one belongs to the user. Finally, it's the screenshot, the screen recording of our mobile navigation app, the red tags. Um, show you the starting point and, and the destination of your, your whole tour, although it's a really short one. And the pink tag show you the current location. OK, let's see how does it like if we synchronize all things together. Go straight. 
Turn left, and the empty slot will be on your left. The empty slot is on your left. Okay, probably you have the question that um, why does this, this section doesn't appear in the very beginning? Because right now, we on, only set out the camera in a certain section in the parking area. So um, in the very first part of the video, the car has not reached the, the part that we have camera. So when it hits that region, then the surveillance uh, image for, for car tracking shows up. Okay. Um, probably ask uh, any questions so far? Please. Uh, like if you're going to build a parking lot from scratch, would you put, could you put sensors in each space mm -hmm. rather than using a camera? Yeah, we, we can consider that. Actually, uh, currently we treat the, the, um, this as an auxiliary plan. If we um, eventually, we find out that um, the performance from the surveillance image is not satisfactory enough. Probably we'll use it, but potentially it won't. It will cause um, other issues. Because uh, first fact, actually there is another. I'm pretty sure that there there is another other place, other parking spot using this strategy that we have sensor in every parking spot, maybe on the surface, but because it is. In our space, it is outdoor. The severe weather, like heavy rain or heavy snow, will damage those devices frequently. And uh, it's also, yeah, it's an uh, observed fact that's happening in other places. So it will be perfect if it's an indoor parking, um, parking space. But um, cause, um, because of those problems uh, we've known, so right now we want to test the performance from surveillance image first. Thanks. What's the difference in cost between like mm -hmm. an individual sensor and the, and the method that you're using, the video scheme, or any clues as to what that difference in cost would be? Mm -hmm. um, so some, somehow that if we set up cameras, then uh, I'll say that we can estimate the cost immediately um, by adding up all the price of those cameras. Mm -hmm. Then probably that's all. Because um, we conduct our experiment for one year, and uh, um, those cameras are still there, and the uh, works looks perfectly. Although from time to time, they, they shut down because of um, extremely hot weather or extremely cold weather, but they're, they're still good. But if we put sensor, then the previous report told us that we need to calculate the damage rate. Mm -hmm. Then um, somehow, if even it's an, in, it's an indoor envir environment, it's still, the damage rate is still considerable. Then if, so we probably will try another, um, we have to try another part of in the, in the parking area then to see that what's the damage rate in the outdoor space, uh, outdoor environment. Mm -hmm. But that's the thing we had, we had considered that um, if we have to change those devices frequently, then yeah, probably it won't be just like um, what we're thinking. Then um, comparing to we, we use we use surveillance camera, we have reliable device for a long time. Okay. That, that's what I thought. Anything else? So in the video, uh, yes. you just moved across one empty slot and then you went and passed, I think, was a yes. vacant slot. So mm -hmm. if, you, if you by chance leave one slot, does the system give you information about the next slot that are empty? 
Mm -hmm. You mean in this case, the system will, will system um, yeah, ultimately. So in this case, you missed the first slot. Mm -hmm. You went past that three slot and you parked it, I think, on the next slot. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh huh. So is the system giving you that dynamic information? Yes, yes, because because um, during your tour from from start point to to the to the final empty slot, um, probably yeah, you will pass through. A, other other empty slot just like you observed, but yeah, because um, in our system we have a strategy to pick the optimal one. Although, although I have to say it's not a real study right now. Um, it's um, I was not a real user for the whole system. So, but our our um, our concept is that we want to find the optimal slot, not just randomly pick a, an empty one, empty one. So that optimal slot maybe. Should minimize your your efforts to take take a walk. So oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Like the nearest one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Instead of find the nearest one available okay. around your car. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Please. Can you explain a little more about how it detects, uh, detects the uh, empty space? I will. Data? I will. Later in my talk. So um. Let's keep going. Yeah, per probably we can take a look at the whole flow chart again. Um, so we have these four functional blocks, which are important: vacant space detection, car tracking, and also. Uh, with with both of them, we know the destination and current location of the user, and we use and we we use our mobile mobile navigation app to guide our user. And why? Um, I mean, the parking space surveillance system provide our the possibility that we can do these two things. So, in the following, I will introduce these parts respectively. So starting from the parking space surveillance. Like what I said, the purpose of this subsystem is providing a front end of these two modules, the, these two goals, we can also say, the vacant space detection and the car tracking. Right now, we have the collaboration with Pittsburgh Airport Parking Office. Thanks to their help, right now, uh, we've set up five IP cameras in certain section of the long-term parking area. So, and these five cameras are set, set up in different views. For example, these are the preview of three of them. And uh, if you take a look at um, these two carefully, then you will find out that they are, the, the direction of these two are toward to each other. So they cover the, um, almost the same, same region. So these are the bus stop of the shuttle. So the purpose that um, we adjust the view, the angle of the camera, um, is that if you look into these two, bo two boxes, they are identical in the real world. But you can see that from this camera, we can easily to tell where is the empty slot, but not from this one. So for each section, for each part in, in the parking area, there will be an optimal choice of camera. We will choose it to conduct both tracking and, uh, um, and the detection tasks. But on the other hand, if that optimal camera shut down, it's hap uh, it happens occasionally. Um, if that one shut down, we still have the second, second bet, um, Second choice, although it is not so, it is not optimal, the performance is not so good, but it's still better than nothing. So consider the coverage and uh, and uh, the different views. We have we, we need to set up the angle of our five cameras carefully. And intentionally, we, we want to somehow in in this section, our goal is to have five um, have eight cameras and. Um, in the in near future, we will pursue that, that way. 
By doing this, right now, we already collect a large-scale surveillance data set. Yeah, we are confident enough to say it is large-scale because large right now we already have uh, about 9,000 hours of surveillance data. It's 1.5 terabyte in storage. And within this data set, we observe those conditions with different weather and different light, lighting um, conditions. Yeah, in this example, same area and uh, this is the image at midnight and it's probably in the afternoon. So it helps us to make the system more robust because the algorithm that in detail won't be the same if we want to detect those cars or empty space in the midnight and or um, in the daytime because of the lighting condition. Also, we also, claim, uh, we also claim that this data set will potentially be suitable for other event detection tasks. Um, yeah, I don't, know, I don't know if you can see it clearly because we have another screen on two sides. So these are four interesting examples we, we observed. From this data set, we can see something like um, people open the door, people hanging around, or open, opening the trunk. So, yeah, we can, within the, uh, observing the, this example, we can define some additional event. Like we can say, oh, this is the example of how many people hanging around. And you can easily imagine that there will be uh, some other interesting application if we have this ob observation. For example, if we can somehow count that how, how many people right now in this in this section of parking area. We can, for example, dynamically uh, adjust the time schedule of but um, airport shuttle, for, um, let's say. Because you can see if there are, there are a bunch of people over there, probably you want to send more than one shuttle. But if there is no, there, there's no need to, to send any shuttle. Yeah, but that's all in the future plan, not happened yet. Um, another thing worthy of mentioning is that in our data set, we somehow naturally avoid the privacy issue. Because usually if we do things like surveillance, yeah, we, we need to sort of care about what, um, what if people were worrying about the identification problem. So because our claim is that in this kind of resolution, although it's, it is good enough to, to detect a car, but not for person identification. You cannot see the, their face clearly. However, in this kind of resolution, we can still, it's still good enough for us to build some interesting, um, interesting application. Does the airport already have cameras in the parking lot? Yeah, um, just in certain, certain section. So, I just think for security reasons. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, in, for security reason, they have some, um, <coughs> some cameras and we'll say with low quality compared to ours. So um, somehow that, uh, I'm not sure about the number, but for probably for one section, um, there will be one or two section occupy one camera. I'm not, not sure about the number, but that camera, probably it is good for human to observe it, hu human to, uh, to monitor it, but is the resolution quality is not so good for machine. And also, yeah, they, um, yeah, so the, I think the main co problem is the co coverage. So if we want to conduct the, um, the application like space detect, uh, em empty space detection, we need more. Obviously, we need more. If they upgrade the cameras, that mm -hmm. they would upgrade them to rear levels? Mm. If they don't have other purpose um, to achieve, probably they won't, because they are good enough for um, for people to see. Yeah, I think so. Our questions, please. Okay. So once we have those on, um, once we we collect the large scale data set. 
we are ready to use the, this data set to build algorithm and a system for detection and tracking. But before that, there is one single, uh, there is one important step to apply so that we can start to use our, our data, which is calibration. It aims to find out the mapping between the coordination of image and coordination of your real world. Specifically to say, um, we know that at this point, uh, at this point there is an empty slot, and we can calculate the coordination x and y in the image. But where is it? Where is it in the real world? We need to know the mapping, and it can be easily achieved by calculating the camera's intrinsic and extrinsic parameter. Um, that that is the somehow the internal char characteristics of our camera. And uh, once we have this mapping, so that if we can successfully track a car and we know those sequence of x and y, we know where it is in the real world. OK, so that's how we build our surveillance system. So any question? Yes, please. Why can't you use passive sensor instead of the camera? Oh, I believe that. Um, I'm not sure if you're talking about the app for street parking, because um, right now in, in my experience, those those types of app they gather the information from either um, the the underground sensor that the gentleman just mentioned, or they make those users self-report um, the place that they park their car, so that they, they know, they know where, is, where are those parking slots. Uh, they're, they're all brilliant, I, I have to say. But again, because right now, we're dealing with the problem in large scale, because there are thousands of parking, uh, parking lots. First, we cannot ensure all, all of those users will um, will apply, will follow the rule of self-reporting. And uh, um, for the for underground sensor, our, our concern is, is the damage rate. So that's why we, we, try to, we, we try to approach the problem, or address the problem using this technique. Yeah. Oh, no, no, please. Can this address multi-parking, uh, mm -hmm. multi-level multi yeah, I believe so. If if uh, you have enough camera and uh, cover all the user care, I, I believe so. Yeah. How, I mean, how high up are the current cameras mounted? Mm -hmm. So it's because right now we fix lo those cameras on the electric pole. So probably it's 10, 20 meters, I think. Because you can see from the preview. Yeah, it appears yeah. to be. Yeah. So theoretically, if you can if you can handle a camera higher, then the view is definitely better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but because because of the let's say the physical constraint, so that's the currently that's the best we can do. Please. So so in theory, you could sit. You could only have to put a few cameras as opposed to your question about the about the sensors or the underground. You know, you address that's a huge that's a, a massive. Mm -hmm. Investment, right? Yes. In yes. the infrastructure of the system, mm -hmm. but this could be a much smaller investment. You only have to strategically yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's. Yes. Actually, the only difference maybe we can say like we can get the data from those sensors, like in a central database. Mm -hmm. What we can do, and then we can analyze all like we can just track or okay, where how many vehicles are coming in a day. So some sort of analytics we can connect with the sensor. That's probably I think the only advantage being that sensor over the camera. Otherwise the camera is like uh, Yeah, the but this claim is with the assumption that all the sensors are working, mm -hmm. right? Because okay. um, you have this amount of sensor underground, then you have to consider the, the damage rate. And sp specifically, it is uh, outdoor environment with all the snow and heavy rain. Then you can imagine that what will happen.
Any other question? Okay. Okay, let's go into the second part. Vacant space detection. So, our system um, should be able to detect the available parking slots from the surveillance image only. Yeah. The whole process works like this. The input image captured from the camera, we conduct calibration and uh, segment out all those areas of each parking slot. So for each small patch here, it represents the regional parking slot. Um, this one with car and this one is an empty one. We feed these small images into machine learning algorithm. Here we choose one of the form, uh, most famous one. Um, it's convolutional neural net. And uh, it will output its prediction result. It will tell you that, so this one uh, without car, and this one I see a car. So, and we put our label right here so that you can see the output. It's the detection result. So, we want to validate the whole pipeline you, you just see. So, um, we need to conduct an um, experiment. Right now, in our preliminary experiment, we manually annotate like 14,000 of images, images like this, and uh, we annotate each region of parking slots if it is with car or it is, it is an empty one. Okay, so like what, uh, what I just said, if we can do this step calibration successfully, so theoretically, we can automatically identify those regions. So um, maybe in addition, we need the information of the, the map of this current area so that we can segment these, these regions out automatically. But in this experiment, somehow we want to focus on the detection, detection performance. So we can run this step manually. So we somehow manually uh, manually find out the, all these regions. And you can image, uh, easily to imagine that it, is, it can be formulated as a binary classification problem because it's just with car or without car. And yeah, so this slides a little bit mentioned about the magic of machine learning that we choose this. It's somewhat like it, it is already a mainstream uh, algorithm right now. It's convolutional neural network. Although I won't go into the detail of, formula of the formulation and the architecture of the whole algorithm, but I do want to mention like several interesting property of convolutional neural net here. The first one is it can extract location invariance feature. So um, it comes from the, um, from the basic operation of CNN which is convolution. Location invariance means that because um, when we apply convolution, we apply the, the same filter at the, uh, each, each region in, within this image. So let's say if certain filter can capture a property like here is the, let's say the corner of the window, the corner window, and because uh, we apply convolution, so no matter the, this, um, the corner of window appears in the bottom of image or, or in the top region of the image, convolution can capture both of them, both of these cases. So we'll, that's why we say it's location invariant. The second thing is, yeah, like all the other deep learning stuff, convolutional neural net has the structure of multi-layers. And hopeful, um, our hope is that we wish the, the lower layer will capture some low level concept like what I just said, the corner of window or wheel or maybe the light, something. And in the higher layer, it will capture some high level concept like the relationship between um, those low level ones. Like the distance between window and the lamp and uh, probably the angle of the, the whole car. Eventually, in the very top part of the, the whole structure, because it's a binary classification problem, the output will be binary. Okay, 
Using this algorithm on, in our experiment, we can achieve like 0.95 or 94 in precision and recall, which means um, very reliable. But like, um, I think I, I mentioned this before, because in our experiment, occasionally our, our camera will shut down. So we do prepare an auxiliary plan. Like we, we have all those discussions that we prepare, we prepare this uh, underground sensor. Although we, d we haven't applied it to all the space in, in the section that we, we have our experiment. But yeah, we have this preparation. So this device is an uh, electromagnetic sensor with, uh, with show, uh, show wave infrared. It can in be installed on surface and communicate with the central server so that we will exactly know that if there's a car over there. And uh, yeah, just briefly mention that there's a battery life constraint about three to five years. That's the whole thing about vacant space detection, how we conduct this task. The next part is about car tracking. There's a problem. OK. The purpose of car tracking is to locate, locate the moving car in the monitor screen in, in real time. The object recognition task, because car, car tracking is a specific case for object recognition, um, ob object tracking, is somehow it's a mainstream task in the research community of computer vision. But in our case, we suffer from some additional challenges, like we have severe condition in lighting and weather, and our object, their, their angles change a lot. In this example, if you can imagine if the car take a turn, then you will see another side of it, which is quite different. Mostly, um, probably the most important, the whole thing should be a real-time process. Imagine if, if certain delay happen in our car tracking, then you have the delay for your navigation. Then, yeah, yeah, what a disaster. So the last one, there are many distractor over here. So in this image, there are so many cars. So probably in the next, in the next moment, we see the, uh, the, the, the place of car will change. But for machine, it's truly hard to, to make the covariance that identifying these two cars are, are identical within these two images. So many distractors co cause a problem. So because of all those regions, those conventional algorithms sort of does not, uh, cannot be applied directly for our ca case. So we propose this heuristic region proposal plus region convolution neural net to solve the whole thing. In the first step, given that we know the location of this car, um, the current location of this car, and from the history, history observation, we can estimate the velocity, the speed of this car. The, in the first step, we'll propose some region and uh, the probability distribution of its next appearance in this image. So in this specific example, we be believe that um, probably the user doesn't drive so, so fast. So there are 0.4 probability it will appear, appear here and the 0.3 here. We assign the probability to zero in all these places because we believe that <laughs> they are in different columns. But probably it won't be necessary to because there, there's a path here. It can drive through here, perhaps. But right now, we didn't consider that possibility. After we have this assumption, um, we pick up those high probable regions and fit them into region convolutional neural net. And we will have a confidence score representing uh, how do we believe um, the car is within that region. So probably you, um, region, region um, convolution neural net is a similar one to the one that I, ju I just mentioned. 
but yeah, again, although we won't go into a detail, but if you have interest, you can talk to me offline. And eventually, John Lee consider the score and the, the estimated prior probability. Then we have the next estimation of the current place that, so that we can keep track on those cars and uh, repeat these two, uh, these two steps multiple times. With the help of those, um, these, these two functions, then our mobile navigation app will know exactly how to guide our user. Basically, it is a turn-by-turn -turn navigation service on a mobile device. The detection module helps us to identify the current, um, no, the destination of, of user's car. And the tracking module reports the current location so that um, our application will know exactly um, what kind of feedback, what kind of instruction we have to we, we have to speak out. Yeah, in this in this example, it has to say go straight and turn left here. Right now, we already have the Android version, and probably the iOS version will appear in the future. Um, in, in our application, like all the other navigation service, we use GPS signal to enhance the whole thing, the instant report of current location. So one obvious question to ask is, why don't we use GPS only? Why do we have to do car tracking in, the, in this case? So our concern is that because the accuracy of GPS signal is about three to four meters at best, which means it is usually worse. So, and um, in in our parking area, the distance between two columns are uh, between road nearby. Mm. So it's sometimes it's, the distance is smaller than its best accuracy. So we want uh, we don't want to count on the GPS signal only. Instead, we use hybrid approach. Um, in our system, we receive the GPS signal and uh, the estimation from camera simultaneously. Note that the resolution probably different, and the and the performance also um, for these for these two functions they vary a lot. Sometimes GPS perform better, and sometimes our our camera is more reliable. Um, so jointly consider these these two coordination, we we have better estimation for the current location. So that um, probably our, so that our mobile navigation will be more um, reliable to our user. So so far I've mentioned all the most of the detail implementation and in methodology of of those functionality in our system. So based on our current experiment and observation, we are confident enough to say um, we've, we've seen the feasibility of the whole thing, of this um, navigation, um, airport parking space navigation system. Our future work will focus on improving the performance and efficiency of each modules. And uh, approaching, approaching full integration of all the functionalities. Also, once the, the whole system becomes robust enough, we will focus on collecting the data from your real user. OK, that's all I want to say today. Thank you. Like that slide will show, like with the column, column one, column two, and all this. Thing. So, are you monitoring if uh, a person is parking his car in that third column, like the mm -hmm. black one? Mm -hmm. You, uh, yeah, this this column. If the person is parking like car in this column, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, you mean we we still consider yeah. if oh, cause. Right now, we have the prior that we exactly know previously that they are here. 
So somehow we elim eliminate the possibility that they will appear at here in the next moment. That's why we set it to zero. Is that what you mean? I was just asking like if the person delivers the part of his star in this column, k equal to zero. So are you doing some action on this keeping the monitoring or something like that? Oh, so oh, we use a prior knowledge that there are there are different rules. And the uh, and uh, the current direction of user is go toward down. So yeah, that's the simply rule based reason. Yeah, you mentioned the accuracy of GPS and three and a half meters or something like that. And I always hear these advertisements on the radio that surgeons use GPS in doing their surgery. And I'm just wondering, what's the difference? I mean, are they using the GPS from the satellites or are they using like... No, oh, I, I do, um, for that example, they use the sensor maybe on the roof, not... You can imagine, because on the satellites, we there was a uh, long distance between, uh, between them and us, right? Because, so, I think the term that's doing surgery with GPS means that they have a sensor on, on the top and which can monitor what's happening. Yeah, that's, that's not a different story. Because, yeah, you, you cannot imagine that we made a decision um, based on the signal from, from such distance away. Right. <laughs> Are you installing your own cameras or are you using the cameras that already uh, exist? No, we have to prepare our own camera. Like what I said, um, there, are some, there are some original ones in the airport parking space. The, let, um, the quality and the resolution is not so good. And the purpose is different. Um, they somehow set up those cameras for, for human to watch, not like for this computer vision purpose. One much feel free to leave if they, if they need to, but uh, also please feel free to grab a little bit more food on your way out. Um, I have a question, please. though. Um, okay, yeah, so it, it seemed like your reliability was pretty high. So on 0.94, 0.95, mm -hmm. and I guess I'm wondering what, how an hour, like what an hour would look like practice, right? So does that mean that you would then lead someone to a parking space that isn't free? Is that what that would translate to? But like five percent of the time you would mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Those oh I will use this six more. So basically those arrows, most of them come from those slots in this kind of region. Mm -hmm. Because of the resolution and the and the angle limitation. So that in this kind of area, we cannot detect the empty slot so accurately. Somehow, um, we prepare multiple cameras for this reason. So this, th these regions, the, the detection output should be from this camera, right? But also considering the fact that they shut down from time to time. So in these cases, we won't know that um, there's, there's em empty slot here. OK, so the error would more typically be that you would think that there wasn't an empty slot when there was, rather than the other way around. So it's not like you're going to accident. Yeah, so I was saying that, like, even if it was only five out of hundred times, I think people would find it, users would find it really frustrating to be led to a space that isn't empty. But it sounds like with the type of error that you found to be most mm -hmm. common, mm -hmm. it would mean that you would have empty oh. spaces that you didn't recognize, yeah. and so, which mm -hmm. doesn't really mm -hmm. make I mean, in real case, in real case, we somehow can, we definitely can find some empty space, right? It's just that they are, they are not optimal, probably still a little bit distant away from their building. But yeah, we can still lead the user to, to a certain one. And for the app itself, did you expect that it will be, I, I'm, I'm thinking about the adoption of the app. It yes. is just for the airport and not the would just be people who are regularly 
be used in a lot of large. Well, I mean, I guess you know that would be like. It, I don't know. I guess I'm wondering. I, I, this is sort of a you know. I, I was just thinking about the what the adoption of the app would be. I guess because then there's this. Only on, because we want to build up this system, um, mainly because we observe the scale of the whole detection and tracking problem, because yeah. it's a really big field. And uh, during the poster session last week, some people proposed the idea that we can, um, um, we can apply the same thing in the most parking space. Um, it's somehow led um it just it, with this kind of scale, scale i don't i don't think um that people will suffer from from the inconvenience of finding a space yes. yeah i guess i don't know i get right, right. We, we can talk about this about time. Mm -hmm. i guess yeah. i'm thinking about like whether there's like simpler systems where you can have like you you know, kind of like the elevators at the cathedral, or the you know those new elevators that kind of you know you say what floor you're going to, and it tells you what elevator to take based on the other requests that it has. And I'm wondering if there's like a oh, I don't know if there's something simple. I guess it's sort of the same thing. I, I guess I'm just wondering who's going to download the app. Is really hmm. Yeah. I'm not crucial sure since that because. Um, the effectiveness, uh, effectiveness, effectiveness of the whole thing um, is also from the dyma dynamic of the traffic, right? If if it's just that um, if you want to go to this building and this this parking lot is always the best choice, then we don't need this. We don't need this one. Yeah. It's because from time, sometimes it will be occupied. Sometimes the best best choice is in another place. So that we need need the surveillance system. So. The um, elevator example, example you just mentioned, probably if if the best choice of which elevator to take is also dynamic, because sometimes there will be huge traffic on certain one, maybe because it's it's the end of certain class or or some other event, then probably you 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 will you will need to choose another one. Then that's I think that's possible. Mm, yeah.